Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, ingesting tenable vulnerabilities using the Firepower Management Center Host Input API. So there's a nice link here with a bunch of APIs that are available. Um, I spent some time playing around with version one. I wasn't able to ingest more than one vulnerability. Uh, and then I decided why not try version zero. And uh, sure enough, I had some success here. So there's a couple things that we need to do to get this in integrated. Just so you know, I'm using Firepower 6.6.1 and Tenable Security Center 5.1.7. So latest versions for the most part, and this fully works as expected. So here's the summary. We've got the Tenable Security Center, we've got Firepower Management Center, and then we've got this Linux endpoint host that runs the connection between Tenable and Firepower and does the um, pulling of vulnerabilities as well, as well as inputting, using that host input API, inputting those vulnerabilities within Firepower. So there's a couple steps. So first off, let's go to policies, network discovery. And from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to advanced. And once we're in advanced, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add an OS and server identity source. And this is gonna be the security center. So go ahead and call this security center. And the type here is gonna be scanner. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit zero here and go ahead and hit save. And now we have our identity source. Save that out. And then the other thing too, this was already set up by default, but you'll want to make sure that you have uh, used third-party vulnerability mappings. We'll go ahead and go to um, integrations and we're gonna go to host input client. And this is where we're gonna add a, the IP address of that Linux host. That's uh, the intermediary between Security Center from Tenable and Firepower Threat Defense. So we'll go ahead and give that an IP. There's no password used here. And we'll go ahead and hit save. And once this is saved, it's gonna allow us to download the certificate required to communicate with Firepower Threat Defense. So we'll go ahead and hit that download button. It's gonna go ahead and download the uh, PKC S12 file and we'll put that somewhere where we can pull it and put it on that Linux box. Now we're on Tenable. We do need to set up a user here. You cannot use their API using the admin account. So lots of different roles here. I chose security manager uh, for um, uh, this purpose. Go ahead and hit add. And that role, we're gonna drop down and change to um, security uh, manager. I didn't show that here, but I did do that. Now we're logged in as that tenable user and you can see we've got lots of data coming in. So I've already created the organization um, and, and done my scans and lots of good data coming in. A very clean uh, lab environment where nothing's really patched. And you can see we've got the MAC address, we've got the NetBIOS name, the IP address, we can drill in, we can learn a lot about the vulnerability itself. So Tenable, really cool stuff. Get that set up. There's lots of things that you can do with Tenable. I'm no expert by any means, but we've got it running and operating. So now we're on the Linux box and we're gonna go ahead and build out the configurations needed. Now this is trial and error on my side. Um, so we need to make sure that you have Python 2.17 and Perl version five installed. So you wanna do that first. And let's go ahead and get started here. So the first thing we're gonna do after we've changed the permissions on the input file that we just did, we're gonna go into the parameters JSON file and we're gonna put in the host name of Security Center, 
or IP address, the FMC host name or IP address, the user in this case is going to be tenable. And remember, it's a non admin user. And the password, you'll enter something in here. Debug true, so we can see what's going on. We'll put our net range as a slash 24 in my case. And add host will leave as um, true. So now we've got that file permission for SF host input agent.pl set to execute. We also have modified the parameters.json. The other thing is now we need that pkcs12 uh, key to move into the same folder we're executing the script from. So I'm just doing that here. I've already have it copied over to the Linux box. And now I'm just navigating to the path so it's in that same folder. And we'll go ahead and just double check that it's there. Now it looks pretty simple, right? A couple quick steps and we're here. But I can tell you it took me a long time to get this to work uh, properly. And, uh, and it would fail based on a variety of different reasons and I've worked through those. The other element here is if there's a bunch of modules within Perl, and I guess you can modify the script to look in the, the directory itself. But what I've done is just change the path, one of the paths. Um, the other way of doing that is moving into one of the existing, all the, the modules into the existing uh, path, including the input plugins uh, modules that are in that folder as well. But then you're, you know, you're, you're messing up the, Perl directories. So all I did was change the environment variable um, and uh, everything works from there. So that was another gotcha that I that I had. So it's ran. It's obviously going to take a little bit more time. I've, I've kind of fast forward this piece because it just shows you every single vulnerability coming in. Okay, so we've got the data. It looks like the script completed successfully. Um, now what you probably want to do is set up a cron job and run this regularly, right? Um, we'll go ahead and check third-party vulnerabilities. We see Security Center here. This is fantastic. I, you know, I was very happy once I finally started seeing this data in here. And then you can go ahead and start pivoting into each one of these elements. It shows you the count. You can look at it from a table view perspective. You can see I've got one host. Actually, when I first ran this, I only ran it against the slash 32. And you can drill back into this host and you can scroll down. You see servers, applications, attributes, and here's my security center vulnerabilities, including the ones that we get passively from Firepower Threat or Firepower Management Center. Um, and you might say, well, do I need those passively identified ones? Well, if you had a hardened system, you may not be able to pull a vulnerability using a scan. So it's good reference to have them anyway. But you can see I can very quickly pivot into the host and see everything about it around the current active vulnerabilities that were discovered by Tenable. Really, really cool stuff.